Let's get started with the first video. Uh, so this first video will be very simple. We're just gonna set up the environment and get uh, a bit of a view of the um, uh, of the overall architecture. So what we want to do is uh, a wallet application that's gonna work, a wallet app that's gonna work on Android and uh, iOS. The best solution I found for this. So there are a few solutions out there. If you don't want you don't want to rewrite the code um, uh, specifically for uh, both platforms. You can use a um, couple of technologies. There's a very familiar one is uh, React Native. Um, so you have this guy called React Native. Uh, you have um, some stuff that is uh, uh, phone gaps, something like that. Um, and you have Xamarin. Uh, the latest uh, comer into the um, the latest comer into the um, the offer is this guy called Flutter, which, which is developed by uh, by Google. So we are going to use Flutter um, mainly because it's pretty cool uh, and it has a good integration with uh, with Rust, and also because uh, it's the one that is getting uh, more and more traction these days. So if you want to, uh, I'm going to not do the entire project from scratch because it would kind of take um, quite a long time and frankly, probably not super interesting. Uh, but instead, I'm gonna uh, take pieces from the project that already exist, but we are going to start from scratch. So I'm gonna remove this stuff, this is three, and start a new project. So assuming that you have installed the environment which on uh, on Linux is actually quite simple. You have um, you have a snap, and so you just follow the steps here. And on Linux is uh, it boils down to um, downloading this this command. So after that, you should have this command Flutter on your path. You just do SDK path, then you should have something. Right? And uh, this command also lets you create uh, projects from scratch. So I think it's just going to do a flutter create. So you do all this stuff. Um, this is actually uh, simpler than all these steps seems to be. Um, a lot of things you have to install, that's the, uh, that's the only problem. I'm going to use IntelliJ uh, Ultimate because I have that version. But I also try on Android Studio and uh, IntelliJ Community. The reason why I'm using this one is because uh, it has support for Rust as well. So this drive, I think, uh, create the app, right? Um, you can create the app inside the uh, IDE, uh, but you can also create it on a command line. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, Flutter create ZC3. And this um, create a skeleton. And the skeleton will be immediately checked in. So we want, uh, I want to separate the code that we write ourselves from the code that is auto-generated. Um, so there are two projects that we are going to need. One will be for um, the application itself. And the second one will be a help, a, a plugin uh, to bridge between uh, the, uh, the Flutter side, the Dart side, Dart side, and uh, the Rust side. So there will be in packages, and we are going to create a plugin. Let me grab the command for that Flutter create plugin. All right. So developing a plugin, create a package here. So that's the command Flutter create. I'm gonna skip the um, the organization, leave it um, standard, and focus. Uh, just do the template plugin. Uh, probably need to uh, easier to copy. Okay, and we are going to call it. Uh, give me a second, so that it's uh, the same name as the other one. Two packages, how can I call it? ZC API, right? So ZC API, uh, and um, 
So uh, the package is ECAPI, but the folder would be ECAPI FFI. So let's do this. So all this so far is uh, is uh, generated. Um, so we go to packages and we sh oh God, what did I do? Okay, I created the wrong place. Uh, so remove this guy and uh, do it again. Okay. Okay, so we should have it here, and I'm gonna rename it uh, with the same name as uh, the other or original project. So okay, all right. So that's our starting point um, that we can check in. Uh, so we check in everything here. Let's take a look at what we have. Uh, a lot of this stuff is uh, boilerplate. Well, all of this stuff is boilerplate, obviously. Uh, some images and stuff, right? Uh, so just commit and call it uh, autogen code, autogen uh, project. Okay. And now we can actually get started. So in this video, I'm going to stop at... Uh, at uh, still setting up the project so we have zc2 which will be our model project and then we create a, we open a new one uh, zc3 uh, new window okay so what we have here is um uh, plug in the phone so once you plug in the phone you can use either a phone or an emulator, but I find that having a phone is uh, is much faster. Okay, so it's plugged in. I don't see why is that. I think we need to. Uh, oh yeah, it's right there. So we can run it. Problem with having a um, a, f a hardware device though, oh, is that uh, this cannot be captured on the screen. But I think it's not. Uh, very very uh, crucial uh insufficient permission okay so if you have that it's because the uh the android um bridge adb was not started as root so let me exit this and uh i have to kill the server because i guess it was started by uh, um it was started by the id uh, but we want to start it as root, so sudo adb, okay, and then uh, sudo adb devices, yeah, so now it's connected, and um, uh, I can put this guy back, okay, so, so far still the, uh, uh, the, the template boilerplate app, uh, the standard uh, example, which is gonna show, it, show us the uh, Flutter demo. Demo. Oh, well, I will update later. Okay. So this needs to be compiled. That takes a little bit of time. So in the meantime, I'm gonna talk about. Let's talk about the uh, the, the plan. We want to have a, um, an app that can send and receive coins. So we should have the ability to scan the blockchain um, for your, for your um, incoming, uh, incoming funds and the ability to show uh, your address and QR code so that other people can scan and send you money. Uh, okay, this is done, right? So we have, we have the demo, demo app, right? Okay, let's, let's stop here. And, uh, and now work on the packages, work on the packages. One one thing is pretty cool with uh, with Dust uh, and Flutter is um, is their package management. So you have a YAML file where you can simply um, put all your dependencies. All right. So the dependencies we're going to use here are these ones. Uh, let me see. All right. 
So we need a flutter flutter, right? This guy is going to be our package. So that means that this is a package that we have just created. Uh, this is our plugin. So it's also empty now. Uh, FFI is for uh, is the, the the bridge the helper for the bridge to to see uh, to see. Uh, our Rust code will be compiled as C code, and um, this is how we're going to call it. This one is um, uh, let me copy everything actually. All right, so this this guy here is the uh, SQL SQL Lite three um, uh, package, so we can make um, we can use SQL Lite and do um, use a, use a database and use um, queries. This one is for um, the the state management. So if you have used React, uh, this is similar to um, the uh, what's the name actually Redux. Uh, so this guy Mobex is one of the um, the state managers. It has been ported to uh, to Dart and Flutter. So we have Flutter Flutter Mobex. This one is for it's a package for displaying a QR code. This one is for scanning a QR code. That guy here is for storing and retrieving uh, key value pairs in the um, in the application storage. So this is we use a database, but for for simple stuff, we can also we can also use um, a simple uh, local storage uh, key value pairs. This guy is for uh, it's just a helper for uh, the form where we enter money, um, so that it, it's a bit more convenient to 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 type in the the, the amount. Uh, it would it would put the comma and the separators and stuff like that. This is an internationalization library, a little helper for uh, working with a path, like a directory path. Uh, this one is to include um, the uh, material design uh, icons. So Flutter comes with a um, set of icons for material uh, material design. Uh, but it's, um, it's just a Google one. Material design icons have uh, many more. And then finally, you have these uh, Cupertino icons, uh, which is, uh, of course, the um, the iOS ones. Uh, one thing here uh, is, yeah, it should be okay, right? Uh, I put any here, but I think we can leave it as 102. So this is it. Uh, nothing else needs to be changed, as far as I know. Now for the dev dependencies, this is a build runner. Uh, and uh, okay, actually, I will put it this way. And this guy goes together. So, this part, the Modex code generator, is going to help us do the uh, work with um, with this Flutter Modex. And the build runner is going to uh, is going to be needed to run this code generator. So, these two guys kind of like work together. I mean, this is like just a script runner, and this guy is, depends on this one. All right, so once you have all this, you can save. I also have some assets here. Uh, we might as well get them, I guess. So these assets are actually the um, uh, the curve, the, um, the zk zk parameters that we are going to need when we got, we need to sign stuff. So let's actually put them now. So I'm going to create a directory. Uh, directory as assets and then uh, copy these two files uh, well, we'll just have two files here right so copy these two files to uh, the other guy okay and then we can include them as as this so this will then be bundled in our app. All right, so this is this is here actually. Right. Okay. Once you have this, uh, we can get the packages. Get this resolves all the dependencies, versions, and stuff. And similarly to uh, Cargo, it creates this uh, this lock right, that has all the versions. So that's it for stage one. So we to the, so far we just have changed this file. Uh, this guy is, is auto generated based on this, and we created this asset file. So let's, let's do this, and then also add the assets. 
uh, sets is actually uh, it's like a few megabytes of uh, binary, da binary data. Okay, so that should be it for uh, for stage one, all the dependencies. Uh, so we call it one uh, add dependencies dependencies. Okay. All right. So step two uh, or step three, uh, we are going to uh, include the native um, dependencies. So uh, native dependencies will be the stuff to. Uh, well, most of the logic will be in Rust uh, because the, um, the 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 way you make uh, the, the wallet management is quite complicated, uh, especially for Zcash, and the libraries that uh, are written are all Rust libraries. So we are going to need that. So let's make uh, native. So so today I'm just gonna we are just gonna do uh, the the skeleton of the app. Right, nothing uh, nothing we are coding yet. And then here we have this ZC. Uh, so this ZC is actually a clone of um, of uh, another project I have on GitHub. Uh, so what we are going to do here is to say that uh, we are going to use submodules in uh, it, and then add um, uh, add this. Uh, this this uh, GitHub project, uh, which is this one, and add this as a, as a submodule. So we take the path, uh, right? Take the path, and we put it in the native ZC. Right? That should reflect exactly the structure we have here. This guy is a. Um, Okay, so native ZC, we have something yeah, that we can build. So obviously this part will not be checked in with our project. We are well, still only storing a link between um, uh, between um, GitHub and, and our this location. And I think we don't need to change this code. Or we need to change it, but very minimally. Okay. Uh, one thing I need to be sure of is, uh, is uh, okay, CC2, we go to native, and we go to ZC. You see what branch, oh, I did change some stuff here. So what do we have, change? Okay, or okay, that what do we change? Checkpoints. Um, okay, I think these changes are not uh, really needed. Oh, I did add this check address. Okay, so I'm probably gonna check in. This is not relevant, this is just for debugging, 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 debugging. Uh, local or oh, this one is maybe interesting. All right, so I'm, I'm going to, to check in these changes so that uh, they end up in the GitHub, and we don't have to uh, have local changes. Okay, so that's my job. Uh, what else do we have? And finally, this guy here is another Rust project, uh, but this is what we are going to need to work on. This project here, the API FFI, uh, its purpose is uh, is to do the uh, export the functions we need uh, uh, from Rust from uh, from this core wallet because this library is actually not very not aware of uh, how we're going to use it. So, for example, we need to uh, uh, to need to to, to adapt some uh, some functions. Like when we do a sync, we do the sync a particular way, and then we have to export that as a as a C function. So that's the purpose of that package. This is package we're gonna create um, later next time. Uh, this one we have. Uh, this one we have. So this is. I think this is it for today. Okay. Um, okay. So next time we're gonna start working on on this package. 
Right, so I'm going to stop this here. Uh, we have a new file, native uh, git module. Yeah, uh, so commit. Uh, commit. Uh, add submodule. Uh, add submodule. Okay, so let's upload this somewhere uh, on uh, on GitHub. Let's uh, create a new one. I call it DC Flutter. Blake, uh, uh, all right, easy plotter. And uh, remote. Okay. Why is it SSH? Uh, I, I want SSH. I, I want SSH. Okay, this one. Okay. Uh, change the branch to main, okay, sounds good. And then push this guy. Yeah, because of the, um, uh, the, the cache parameters. All right, anyways, this is it for today. Uh, so I think uh, we don't need to wait for this. Uh, let's just stop here. And the next time we go and work on the, on the actual new code. Alright, that's it.